Returning to the state of Washington is always a new adventure for me. I want to share with you the sights and sounds of this beautiful northwest corner of our nation. May 5th, 2021. A disturbance is reported alongside a popular roadway in Seattle, Washington, drawing heavy police presence to the area. According to witnesses on the scene, a woman had been spotted limping down the street, wailing in agony while holding an unknown object in her hand. The woman was acting incredibly erratic and appeared to be seriously injured, though despite this, it had apparently taken as many as eight police officers to subdue and restrain her. And this was far from the most chilling detail, with that being in the woman's appearance, as onlookers would go on to claim that there was something off about her face. It was unnatural, almost zombie-like. The story began as whispers among the community, with brief mentions being made across the web, though not many would take these posts seriously. As to outsiders, this seemed to be yet another internet hoax, or perhaps just some kind of extreme overreaction. But in reality, this was a very real scene that played out that evening, and one that was about to be put on display for the whole world to see, as the first video would quickly emerge thrusting this case into an international spotlight and giving birth to an internet mystery known today as the Seattle Zombie Woman. Before we dive into this, I just wanted to let you guys know that I have a brand new second channel called Crowley TV. And over there, I'm gonna be exploring some mysteries and conspiracy theories in person. Overall, the channel's gonna be a lot more fun and way less morbid than this channel over here, while also still exploring some of those dark and creepy themes. So if you guys are interested in checking that out, I will leave a link in the description below. And make sure you turn those post notifications on if you wanna be alerted to my first upload. Thank you guys as always for your support and I will see you over there. The video immediately took the world by storm, as it showed a woman with a ghostly pale face, with half her head shaven, as she limps across the street wearing only one shoe. And with each step she takes, she seems to yell in pain, before the video quickly cuts. In her hand appears to be the mysterious object, which the uploader of the video claimed to be a fanny pack. And disturbingly, it appeared to be soaked in blood, along with many other parts of the woman's body. In terms of context, there wasn't much, as despite the video going viral across the site, information on this individual dubbed the Seattle Zombie Woman was practically non-existent. According to the uploader, police had arrived and intervened just after the recording had stopped, in that it had taken a full team of officers to ultimately restrain her and eventually take her away, likely to get some form of treatment, though they admit that they weren't sure what happened from there or, just as importantly, what had led to this moment. Though interestingly enough, despite the fact that the answers were not emerging, other recordings certainly were. On the same day this now infamous TikTok was posted, another clip would be posted to YouTube by a separate user, seemingly showing a different angle of the same event, with this version being significantly longer. Here, we get a better angle of the woman's face, as it appears completely abnormal, with her eyes and lips appearing to be pitch black, which is a dramatic contrast to her pale complexion. All in all, she looks sickly and appears to be acting completely unhinged. Near her, multiple cops are seen attempting to calm her down, though she just continues walking and screaming, even escaping their grasp at the end of the video, while continuing her erratic behavior. From there, it's assumed that the struggle continued before finally coming to an end some time later, which was showcased in yet another video posted to TikTok. And it's in this clip where the mystery takes a far darker turn, as we can hear the lady say her first discernible words.
The video shows the woman begging the officers not to take her to the hospital, pleading as if her life depended on it. And it only gets stranger and even more tragic as she begins pleading with them not to take her baby. This may seem like a random one-off comment, until you realize that the object in her hand had seemingly changed. Even though the footage is pretty hard to decipher, it seems as though that bloody fanny pack that she had been holding in the original clip was no longer in her possession, and instead, she appears to be holding something entirely different. This object has been the source of great speculation, as the blurry video makes it hard to definitively identify. Though some, including myself, seem to think that it closely resembles a baby, and more specifically, the head of a baby. This was the last clip we would receive from the incident, leaving behind a trail of unanswered questions and overwhelming concern for the woman shown in the clips Though despite the popularity of this case and all the questions put forth, the answers never came. Bizarrely, no official statement would be made by the Seattle PD, despite their officers being shown in this viral video. And on top of this, despite the story being picked up by a few news stations, no official conclusion or clarification would be brought forward. And given the lack of context and the lack of closure, this internet mystery was born and the theories would quickly spread like wildfire. Right out of the gate, many users would be quick to call this story a fake, believing that this was nothing more than a setup, mainly due to the lack of reporting and also because of the woman's appearance, as given how unnatural she looked, many believed that she was simply wearing a heavy amount of makeup, with some calling her appearance and demeanor almost cartoonish. Plus, if we're being honest, TikTok is completely filled with fabricated stories just like this, leaving many set on this whole situation being fake. However, this actually isn't the case. One of the few updates we've gotten in this case came from the discovery of official police dispatch radio, which was found publicly available on a site known as Broadcastify. There, users would find audio from May 5th in the Seattle area that seemed to depict this exact incident, with the audio being just as chilling as the videos themselves. 300816 Avenue West. There's a female walking eastbound on West Barrett Street that has blood running down her face and leg. She's also yelling and limping. She's described as a white female, 20 to 30, 55 to 57, thin build, with a shaved head and brown patches of hair wearing a gray t-shirt, blue jeans, and one white shoe. 15th and West Armour Street on the uh, west side, just north of. Send an uh, AMR for an ITA. The recording seems like an exact match to these videos, from the way the subject is described, all the way to that unmistakable screaming in the background. And this is undoubtedly from the Seattle PD, it came straight from their official police line, meaning that whatever this incident truly was, the police response to it was very real. This note also seems to disprove a long-standing theory that the clips were actually from the set of a movie being filmed in the area, as coincidentally, during this exact time period, there was a major film being produced in Seattle called Kimmy. On Monday, film crews were spotted in Westlake Center shooting a new HBO movie called Kimmy. Which many had speculated that this was some kind of PR stunt from the project. But given the fact that this was a real police response, and that the film has actually since come out, with there being no mention of any zombies or any similar incidences within it, this is yet another debunked theory. And while on the subject of debunked theories, I want to briefly mention what, at one point, had actually become the most popular theory surrounding this case, which is honestly incredibly offensive. And that is the claim that this woman was Marilyn Stanley, a woman who was brutally attacked by her ex-boyfriend and his dog, leading to devastating injuries. And because of her disfigurement, people pointed to her being the Seattle zombie woman, believing that this footage was taken just moments after her assault. However, despite so many people reporting this, it is incredibly easy to disprove, as the Marilyn Stanley attack took place in Kentucky, not Seattle. 
and the assault happened all the way back in 2015, a full year before TikTok was even created, and a full six years before this video was filmed. This theory was never a possibility, and one Google search would have shown that, but unfortunately, that didn't stop the speculation. And the outlandish theories continued from there, as some would quickly fall off the deep end, believing that this woman truly was a real-life zombie. The theory is obviously very ridiculous, but it was made a bit more intriguing, as around the same time, there were reportedly similar occurrences emerging throughout the world of individuals looking and behaving in a similar manner. To make things even more curious, this video soon began being removed and censored from both TikTok and YouTube, with only a few versions being left throughout the web. And adding this with the fact that there was no media coverage following this event and no police statements made to the public, despite the situation's virality, it left many convinced that this was some form of a greater cover-up. But ultimately, it's not hard to tell that this theory was just fear-mongering. And at the end of the day, it's a theory that is highly unrealistic, though interesting to speculate. More logically, it's been theorized that this lady had been in some sort of car accident as she was shown walking alongside a fairly busy road and appeared to almost be in shock, with her potentially having lost her baby in the wreck, adding to the trauma of the moment. But it seems completely unrealistic that if a child had passed away, there would have been no reports about it. I mean, surely this would have brought at least local media coverage, and it definitely would have been mentioned in the police blotter, which it wasn't. And given that no mention of a child was made on the official police recording at the scene, this idea, thankfully, has been ruled out, meaning that this object was likely something entirely different. Though even with this, it still leaves the car accident theory as a very real possibility, as it could explain why she was acting this way, along with her apparent injuries. Along with this possible explanation, there was another theory that I initially thought to be the most plausible, with that being that this was all the result of drugs and or severe mental illness, which would not only explain her behavior, but also the lack of official reporting, as a woman on drugs causing a scene is nothing all that noteworthy, especially in a major city. And as for her appearance, well, drugs can literally turn people into shells of themselves and make them completely unrecognizable. And her ragged and torn clothing could just be the result of potential homelessness, a fate that sadly befalls far too many people in our society who deal with these very struggles. Though with all this being said, landing on one definitive conclusion was unfortunately impossible based off the limited information available. And despite there being plausible theories put forth, a true answer seemed further away than ever, especially as the months began to pass. But even though the situation began to seem hopeless, a break would soon emerge out of nowhere in the form of police body cam footage that would blow this case wide open. On March 9th, 2022, a YouTube account by the name of Rebecca MS would upload a video revealing her findings into the Seattle zombie woman mystery. As even though the world had seemingly forgotten about this bizarre case, Rebecca had taken it upon herself to find its true conclusion, which led her all the way to the discovery of this footage. Hey, ma'am. Hey, it's okay. You want to tell us what's going on? Is that, is that real blood or fake blood? It almost looks like fake blood. I don't think any of this is real blood. We all just, uh, we are just... Yeah, and then... Is your face burnt? No, it's gonna make our It's, it, it, it took me a little bit while, but it's like, it's like, almost like, like Halloween, like zombie makeup. The video shows the Seattle zombie woman incident from the perspective of the police on scene. And although this further proves that the response to this incident was in fact real, it also proves that the incident itself was not. 
as the first responders began to quickly realize that this lady wasn't even injured, and she was instead wearing heavy theatrical makeup with fake blood, leaving the officers and bystanders just as confused as the rest of us. And the biggest revelation to come of all this was the discovery of this individual's true identity, with her real name being Kimberly Kasai, a revelation that would, in turn, lead to the discovery of her social media profiles, and ultimately, the truth behind this internet mystery. Not long after the incident occurred, Kimberly would post this picture in full makeup, matching identically to the Seattle zombie woman, along with the caption, I am not your lab rat. She would then make a few other posts on Facebook, which revealed that she had carried out this whole stunt as a way to voice her opinions on certain political topics, which I unfortunately can't go more into here. But in the end, despite the police and paramedic presence being very real, this woman, the Seattle zombie woman, was simply acting. This is truly one of the strangest cases that I've seen in a long time, since its theories were so dark and so disturbing, yet in reality, this was nothing more than a bizarre publicity stunt. And in the end, it's obviously a good thing that none of these theories were true, and that no one was injured as a result, making this one of the very few internet mysteries that actually arrived at a definitive, and I guess somewhat satisfying conclusion. I want to give a huge shout out to my god tier patron members Alexander Duran, America's Grumpy Uncle, Bazoo42, Biznacker, Bray, Karen S, Charles Robel, Daniel Binge, Donovan Aaron, Emmanuel Kadena, G, Game Gamer, Jake Parsons, JB Funk, J Money, John Stuart Muller, Catherine Ross, Lacey, Larry Matingley, Mark PH, Max, Mycrafty Ways, Nathan Backus, Phoenix Morgan, Sam Lutfi, Seralis Scar77, Skelly, Sub to Micro O, Unblended Korchnoi, William Berg, Zinsu Zensai, and Trucky Doggo. 